So let's delete this user and keep things simple. So now we are back to our navigation and that greet text. Let's have another key here and I will call this car. The text should just say car and then I'm going to copy this, paste it for Spanish and just add an S. Same thing for Japanese. All right, so now in our app.view, I'm going to delete this H1 and instead of this greet, we just want to use that car. So we can see the text in Japanese, English and Spanish. Now in these translations, we want to say, for example, one car, two cars, and sometimes there is no cars. And we want to show the proper message based on the number of items we have. In order to have a plural version of a word, we can use a pipe and then provide that word. So in this case, car is the singular version of this key and cars is the plural version. Again, if I copy this, paste it for Spanish and Japanese. So I repeated that for Japanese and Spanish. And now we want to see how we can use this because by doing this, we don't see any difference. We still see car as singular. So the default is always one. But if we want to say there's more than one, we can pass a second argument to this T method again and just pass the number. And if I say anything except one, for example, two, then it shows cars and same thing for other languages. And that's how simply we can provide the plural version of a word. Now, sometimes you want to add zero. So if I say zero, we still see cars because it's not one. And sometimes we want to say if it is zero, then show no cars. For that, we can have another version of that same word. So notice here we have two versions, but if I provide another one or a third one, the first one becomes the zero item. For example, if there is no car, we want to say no cars like this. This is when the item is zero, this is when there is one, and this is when there is more than one. Now I'm not going to include this in other translations, so we can just see in it English. So in our app component, we still have zero here. If we go back and switch to English, we can see no cars because it's zero. I'm gonna copy paste this and say we have one car and then maybe 10 cars. So we have no car, car and cars. So we are getting the three different versions of that same word based on the number provided here. Now let's have another example. Right now, this one says cars, but it doesn't say how many cars and we want to show that number. For that, again, we can have dynamic value before these cars. We are keeping these three versions, but before this text, which is the plural version of our item, we can have curly brackets and say count. And for the singular version, I just want to hard code one car. Now with this change, if we go back to our website and switch to English again, you notice we have no cars, one car, and then 10 cars. So that number is included in the translation. And just a detour, I'm just going to set the locale to ENUS so we don't have to switch to English every time we want to test something. So now we can see our translations and how to have different versions of the same word. Now, one last example when it comes to plural and singular versions of a word. Sometimes you don't want to show this number and you want to show a different text instead of this 10, for example, you want to say the text 10. And also this number one, we don't want to say one, we want to make it dynamic so we can use a different text in different places. So if there is no car, we would say no cars. If there is one car, we would say n car. And same thing for the cars. So the plural and the singular are the same, except this S at the end. So now let's go back to app and let's keep this as it is just to see what happens. We get no cars, we get one car and 10 cars. So that is expected because we are providing these numbers and in our translations, we are just adding a placeholder or a parameter and this will automatically pick that number and show it on the screen. But we want to replace these numbers with some custom text. So before the number, as a second argument, we want to provide an object and within that, we want to set the n, that is our parameter, to whatever we want. So in this case, one. And the same thing goes down here. So we can say n is, for example, many. Back to our website, you can see we have one car and many cars. So again, notice that we have the key first, then the options, and then the count. And this is in Composition API. If we were using Options API, then the number go first. But this is how we use it in Composition API. 
So when it comes to translations and having different versions of the same word, I think this approach is the best because you cover three different versions and you can replace this N with any text you want and you don't have to repeat yourself. Now keep in mind, we could do the same thing with count, just like the previous example. If I say count here and we had a count instead of this N, then the result would be the same. But the documentation uses N and that's why I am just using the same example. So that is pretty much about messages or translations. And you saw that we used these symbols in the translations. So when it comes to this I-18 package, there are five symbols that are special symbols and they will be processed by the compiler. So we have closing and opening curly brackets and at sign and dollar sign and the pipe. So these symbols cannot be used as a string in our translations. If you want to use these symbols, you need to provide it in a literal syntax. So let's have an example here. For example, I have an email key and the text is going to be account and then we want an at sign here and then the domain of that email. Now we cannot use the at sign like this because the compiler would try to link this to a message. So since we want the symbol at in our text, we can wrap it with another set of curly brackets and then single quotations. So we need to wrap this whole thing with double quotations. If I replace it like this, now this is what we have. And in order to use it, just like how we used other messages, we can go back to our app and let me delete these two. We want to say email. And this one needs two parameters. One is account, for example, John123, and domain. Uh, I will set it to gmail.com. And back to our website, we can see the at symbol in the text. And this is how we want to show a person's email. If I remove these and just provide the at like this, you notice what happens here. So the compiler doesn't know these are dynamic values. Now, the last thing I want to mention about the messages section is that you can also have custom rules for plural and singular words, similar to how we had a custom modifier here. We can have another option and that is plural rules. And again, here we can have a function that shows a different text based on the number of the elements. Keep in mind, we have another property here that is called polarization rules, and that is used in the options API. So if you're using composition API, this is what we need to use for custom plural rules. Now I don't have an example for this one, but the documentation provides this example where they use Russian language to have different words for different number of items. So you can read about it in the documentation under this section. Now, the next thing we want to cover is date time formatting. 